Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper and this is ALM 017, also known as Pamela's New Workout by Busy Circuits. So there are people out there that say, well, PAMS doesn't need any sort of introduction, uh, but I'm absolutely certain that there are hundreds of thousands of Euro rack users out there that don't have PAMS in their rack yet or that might want are considering diving into PAMS and there weren't that many videos out there that show the current firmware. I'm running firmware number 207 uh, which is the latest at uh, today's date and I just felt it made so much sense to really show its features, how you can use them, all of the modules benefits there as well. So I'm going to show you all of the menus, all of the functionality with one big exception and that's I'm not going to talk about any of the inputs because I want to save those for a future video because that's where it gets a bit more complex and I want to make sure that we have enough time to talk about those as well. Um, so that being said, this video was in no way sponsored by uh, by busy circuits i bought this module myself because i needed a master clock and i always like these versatile uh, modules uh, because next to a master clock this is of course a an eight channel modulation wizard that you can do great things with and i really truly fell in love with pams don't tell my wife please because uh, well this is pams for those of you who've never seen the backside of a PAMS module, it's uh, it's a nice drawing and I love that they made the PCB pink. I truly like that. It's a great p little detail. Um, so I would now say, well, uh, hope you guys are gonna enjoy this video. For now, I would say, um, here we go. So here we have Pamela's new workout, PNW, up close and personal. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to actually start from scratch. So when you have the BPM selected, just hold down the selector button and you can see how you can set the, the input PPQN, uh, if you want to use the run and if you want to save all your settings, but you can also do a reset. So I'm just gonna do that straight away. And if we then exit this, you see that we have everything set to the, well, let's call it the factory defaults, right? So what I want to do is I just want to show you uh, what everything is and how it all relates to each other. So the first thing what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start. And one thing you're gonna see is I currently have two out of the outputs connected, so channel one and channel two, and both are set to the times one uh, modifier. So if I then go to out number two and select that, I can show you what you can do with this. So you can actually say, well, I want to do this twice as fast. So you see that in the, well, the pink magenta kind of color uh, in the second window there, or you can do times three, and then you have three pulses per beat, and you can go all the way up to 48, and you can also go down. And as you can see, there are some non-integer values there as well. Um, so you can also do divisions. So you can do a division by 1.5 or divided by two. So then the pulses uh, happen, well, only half of the times. And the same thing goes here as well. You can go all the way down to 512 so that's a pretty long uh, modulation source there and you can of course also use the inputs for those as well so let's go back to times one there you go and we're back to where we were right so if you then hold down the button, you can actually go to the start here. And that's of course the first setting is what kind of wave do you want? And maybe the word wave is um, a bit of a misnomer here because you can also do other things there. So let's select that. So the first option you have is a triangle. You can also do a sine wave. 
something that resembles an envelope. And you've got random values, stepped random values. So you could say this is essentially a random sample and hold, but you also have a smooth random. That's great. And you can also use your CV inputs to modulate and change that. So let's start with just a normal gate and play with some of the other settings. So the first one is an attenuator where you might say, well, I want to uh, lower the actual values that we have there. So as you can see, it's going down. Maybe you want to have them only half as high. And this of course also works if you've got other wave shapes. If you've got a triangle or a sine wave. And of course also for the random values, let me just show you those as well. There you go. It's like an attenuator on top of that. So let's put this back at 100. There you go. The other thing is, of course, an offset. So that's actually just adding a set value to it. So let's uh, set this at 50. There you go. So you see that you never go down to zero. It always starts at 50% and stays there. So you wouldn't say it if you look at just the gate signal that we have, but if we then select one of the other wave shapes, you see that it will be, well, cut off once it hits plus five volts. There you go. Same thing for the sine wave, for the envelope, random values, smooth random values. Let's go back to that one and say that we want to have the offset back to zero. Then we need to talk about the width of the actual pulse. So this is very simple to see and to imagine if you're talking about the, the gate signal. So let's go to 25%. You see that you have a 25% pulse or, or high uh, signal and 75% low signal. But this is also very interesting to do with the other wave shapes. So if you do a triangle, you see that it is skewing a lot. So let me just keep it at the triangle and let's go to the width and go all the way down to zero. Then you have a sawtooth. And if we then go to 100, you have a ramp. So even though you only have a triangle and a gate and a sine wave, you, you do have some of the other uh, options there as well. So let's uh, keep it at, uh, at 100 and let's go to the sine wave. You see a same skewing happening there. For the envelope, it does get a lot broader to say that. There you go, or really small. But let's uh, go back to 50. And let's uh, set the wave back to the gate. There you go. Then we have the phase. So which actually means, so where in the actual, well, phase do you want to have the, well, the pulse happening? So you can say, well, I want to have that happen at 50%. There you go. So this now goes up when the original one goes down and vice versa. So that's pretty nice. And you can do pretty interesting things with this. So maybe this is a good point when I start to introduce some sounds. So let's uh, first start with something on channel one, the hi-hats. There you go. And if I then grab the 
other one, channel two, and I connect that to a bass drum. You see that that is now changing. So if I now go back to the phase and put that at 50, you have that nice offbeat sound, right? Let's just keep that uh, for now. So what we can then also do is we can start introduce some delays. So let's say we want to delay this with 11% and we want to do that for every And you can add some nice swing to this. You can also do some random skipping. So let's say you want to say, well, I want to have one out of four or 25% chance of skipping a beat or a signal in our case. zero so that we uh, don't skip any of the signals and then you come to the Euclidean rhythms so you can say how many steps you want and how many triggers you want and then you can also rotate that as well so let's uh, start with the steps let's set that at let's say uh, 16 and you can then do the triggers of those 16 you want to fill 13 of them and you now start to see how you can then fill up that Euclidean rhythm. And you can then also say, well, I like this, but I want to rotate this a bit further. And what this also does is you can actually loop something. Or say, I want to loop the last four steps. And if you go back to zero, it of course it recedes and it goes back to the Euclidean rhythm you had. This is of course also very useful if you don't have a gate signal, but when you actually have a, a random value going in, so the random steps or the, the smooth random. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna introduce our third channel here. So I'm just gonna Close these, set these back to zero. Go back to this, go to channel number three, and I'm actually gonna set this at the times, times two, so it's twice as fast as channel, uh, as channel one and two. And I'm gonna hold this and set this to a random, that sequence, there you go. And I'm then gonna use that. Here we go. In one of my oscillators. And I'm gonna use channel four to trigger an envelope. So that's also gonna be a times two. 
on. And the only thing I then need is, of course, to trigger an envelope. So I'm using maths to just do envelopes here. So these are the stepped voltages that we get from channel number three. Just like you would get them from a from a random sample and hold, right? So let's go back to channel number three. So hold on. Let's go back to the loop and say we want to have the last two notes repeated. last two beats I should say or you can just keep them running randomly and then we come to a rather interesting feature that was new with uh, well, well, later firmwares is you actually do quantization so you can do major minor harmonic minor, pentatonic major, pentatonic minor, Lydian, and all of the others that you have there as well. So I'm gonna post a full list of all the uh, of all the scales down below, but you can also have a look at the, well, at the manual at uh, Busy Circuits, of course. So I'm gonna set it at pentatonic minor, because I personally just like that. And you immediately hear that this is becoming more melodious because of that quantization. So if we then go back and change this, let's say to a, a smooth random wave, you actually start to see all of these quantization steps when the signal is going up and down. And because you can also just say, well, I want to have the waves coming or the actual values coming from CV1 uh, or CV2, you can also use PAMS as a quantizer, as a standalone quantizer, if you want. But you can also just use it like this. I personally like to keep it at the, uh, the random, random way there. So let's go back to the quantization. And then you also have Slope. I'm going to skip the logic for now. I'm going to do that based on channel two and channel one again. But you can also add slope. This actually makes the well, the timing less well less perfect. So you can actually introduce some human sloppiness to it. You might not see it in this way, but if you go to channel number two, add some sloppiness to it. You hear how that bass drum, the kick is actually going everywhere, but not in the right spot, right? So I like to keep it at something like 5% maximum, and it does make it sound more human. But I was also talking about the, the logic. So let's say that we um, want to say, well, we only want this, and let's just change some of the timings here. So I'm just gonna change this to a times two. I'm gonna set two to three. Don't worry, it's gonna get better. And if we then go into logic, and we say we only want to have this triggering only when both one and two are both high, or when could the, the, the or is high, or if it's an exclusive high there as well. Again, it's either the AND, the OR, or the exclusive OR, and you can do that for every of the channels, of course. And you can, of course, also use the CV input.
You can, of course, mute one of the uh, channels. You can save your channel settings, you can load them, and you're back to level. So this is just a quick run through of the menu options within PAMS. Um, I've got this in my rack now for maybe two weeks and it's become one of my staples to work with. I truly love it and I've had people ask me, well, yes, but you've got a hermit already. So what would you actually want PAMS for? But you can't beat the ease with which you can set up your your rhythms, your, 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 your timings with PAMS, even a module as user-friendly as Hermit can't beat PAMS in that regard. And then of course you have a lot of these settings that are really quickly to change. I just love it and it works perfectly together as well. So what I'm currently used to doing is actually just use PAMS as my master clock and just connect Hermit to it and then just uh, run several of these nice things through that. Just a quick example of the nice things you can do with PAMS and Hermit combined on one single system. So you've got your random notes coming from uh, from PAMS and you've got your sequence coming from Hermit. I just love how these things just work together. Uh, so in this patch, uh, I've got PAMS doing, all, doing everything and you've seen how I set that up. I've got Hermit just running one single sequence there and I'm using the uh, buff Jarvis to well to split everything so you can have both the visualization running there and the actual output coming from ev from everywhere. Um, channel one is running the hi hats on the Metalotron two. Channel two is running the kick drum on the Tip Top Audio uh, one, so actually a sample player and channel 3 is indeed uh, modulating the graphic VCO by Erica Sins that I'm using to do these ploings there as well and then of course the envelopes are coming from mats so I hope you enjoyed this let's go back to the studio and wrap this up shall we cheers so I hope you enjoyed this video this deep dive on PAMS on Pamela's new workout or ALM 017 by Busy Circuits um, I can't recommend this module enough and it, the reason why I actually bought this is I mentioned I needed a master clock but I was also intrigued by all of its capabilities for, as a modulation source so I did my due diligence before ordering this from Schneider's Laden and I I understood what it was doing before I actually got it, but I know there wasn't that many videos out there that showed it at this level of detail. So I hope you found this video enjoyable uh, and hopefully at least informative. Uh, let me know with the uh, thumbs up and thumbs down, please. And for now I would say, please, well, as mentioned, like, subscribe, 
and if you've got any questions or if you want me to show any specific things with this firmware on Pamela's new workouts, leave a comment below or drop me a line at jesper at the modular clubhouse.nl. Um, for now, I would say, well, everyone, please stay safe, stay healthy. People say we're almost there, so um, please do so. And uh, see you next time. Cheers.